Okay, so uh, yesterday we talked about Hooke's Law, and Hooke's Law says that the restoring force in any elastic object, but in a spring in particular, okay, is equal to negative k times x. Okay, k being the spring constant or stiffness of the spring, and x being the displacement from its resting or equilibrium position. Okay, that tells us that as we get further from equilibrium, okay, the restoring force will vary linearly, which is of course what's necessary for simple harmonic motion to occur. Right? And then we looked at how this relates to elastic potential energy, because you get elastic potential energy by doing work on something elastic. That is, exerting a force over a distance. In fact, your average force over a distance. Okay? And so what we did is we kind of derived from here that average force would be one half kx times x. Okay, because d would be x, right? And that's where we got our one half kx squared from, okay, for our elastic potential energy. Again, you're not going to have to derive that as long as you understand that the work you do on an elastic object results in elastic potential energy. So for an object that is going back and forth, Okay, through a simple harmonic motion, okay, our equilibrium position would be about here. Okay? So as the object is moving out to the, um, to the right, okay, as far as possible, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down because the restoring force is getting larger and larger. The acceleration is getting larger and larger because the restoring force is getting larger. Okay? And eventually, the object stops. Only for an instant, because it's going to do what? Turn around and go back to equilibrium. The restoring force is at its maximum, at your maximum. What's that special distance called? Maximum distance from equilibrium. Starts with A. Amplitude. amplitude. So at the maximum amplitude, all of our energy is potential. It has to be, because we're not moving, we can't have any kinetic energy at that point. Okay? So potential energy is at its maximum. Velocity is at its minimum, zero. Okay? Acceleration is also at its maximum, as is the force. Okay? All of those things okay, are at their maximums at the point of um, at the, uh, at the highest amplitude. Okay? Now, as the object starts to move back, eventually okay, it will get to, oh, sorry, equilibrium is supposed to be right there, I drew the wrong spot. Okay, um, so equilibrium would actually be sort of right here. Would actually be right here. Okay, so as we're moving back, V is going to increase, okay? Kinetic energy is going to increase, potential energy is going to decrease, and eventually we'll get back to equilibrium, where X is zero, because displacement is measured from equilibrium, right? That means that at equilibrium, I don't have any what? All my energy would be potential. Oh, kinetic. kinetic. At equilibrium, all my energy is kinetic because I've gone from the maximum amplitude where my force and acceleration are maximum and my speed is zero. Okay, and I've accelerated all the way back to equilibrium. Okay, my speed is at its maximum at equilibrium because once I pass equilibrium, what's going to happen? As soon as I pass equilibrium, the spring is going to start what? Right, pushing back. It's going to start slowing the object down again. Okay, so you have your maximum speed and maximum kinetic energy at equilibrium, but you don't have any potential energy, you don't have any acceleration, and you don't have any force, because the spring is neither stretched nor compressed at that position. Okay, that sort of makes sense. It's like being at the lowest point on the roller coaster. You're all kinetic and no potential. When, when nothing's touching it, though, and, that, and where the spring sits, that's equilibrium, too. That, yeah, because yeah, if I put the mass on, that's not going to change it. It's, right. it's just going to sit there. Okay. okay, and then, of course, as we pass equilibrium, then the situation starts to flip-flop. Okay, We start to slow down because now the spring is pushing back towards equilibrium. Eventually, we'll get to the maximum amplitude on the compression side. 
okay? And we'll be in exactly the same situation we were on the stretch side, okay? That is, velocity will be zero, force acceleration will be at their maximum, okay? Will be all potential energy, no kinetic energy. Everybody kind of follow on that? Okay, so that is where this idea comes from. Okay, it's the same as the roller coaster. Okay. Everybody good with that? Making sense? So, let's have you guys try, not that one, not that one. Okay, let's have you try this one. This is just a hook's law question. Okay. Okay, so just a Hooke's Law question. They're telling us the spring constant, 30 newtons per meter, okay? Meter, okay? And it's pulled to a distance of one and a half meters. So this is a long spring. If you could stretch it one and a half meters in one direction, it's a pretty long spring, okay? But it's stretched one and a half meters from equilibrium, okay? It doesn't say which direction, so we're just gonna have to go with positive N negative, okay? Um, so we're just gonna say, all right, then the restoring force equals negative K times X. So that'll be negative 30 times 1.5, which will give us negative 45 Newtons as the restoring force, okay? You could also say towards equilibrium in a situation like that where they didn't specify which direction it was displaced, okay? Um, but if they do specify, like it's to the right or to the left, don't write to, towards equilibrium. If the question actually specifies a direction, you go with the direction it specifies. Okay, questions on now? Pretty straightforward, Hooke's Law. All right, I would like you guys to try number two. It's not, it's also Hooke's Law. It's not mathematically challenging, but then we can say we've done one like it. Okay, so I'll give you a minute here on number two. Okay, we're not doing number one because we just did one like it. Okay, so for number two, okay, they tell us the restoring force, okay, is 100 newtons because that's how much force was required to pull the spring. That's how hard the spring is pulling back, okay, uh, or to push it because it says compressing, okay, at a displacement of four centimeters. What does displacement have to be in? Meters. Meters, okay, because this is in newtons, which are kilogram meters per second squared, so you're Displacement's got to be in meters. So that would be 0 0.04 meters, okay? And we're looking for the spring constant. So F equals negative K times X, okay? And so we're going to bring the negative and the X over to this side, okay? And so when we do that, okay, we have the force of 100 Newtons, which is negative, okay? Negative 100 Newtons, because it has to be opposite of X. And then I'm going to go over negative 0 0.04 because I brought the negative over, okay? Now, is it important that I have those two negatives there? Yes. Because they have to cancel because K can't be negative. In fact, it also can't be positive. It is a scalar quantity, okay? It is Newtons per meter, right? It is just how stiff the spring is, right? So if you end up with a negative number, it's just because you forgot to put a vector on one of the other numbers, the magnitude is probably correct, okay? So when we go over that, it should be what, 2,500? Actually, sorry, 2.5. 2. 2. That's 10 to the 3 um, newtons per meter. OK, everybody all right with that one? This is a good one. All right, I wanna, want you guys to try this one. I want you to. But it does require you to think a little bit, but this is a very, very common way to ask a Hooke's Law question. Okay, so I will tell you, spoiler alert, it's a Hooke's Law question, okay? But you need to think about what's pulling on the spring, okay? The context of this question is really important for how it works. Okay, so what's pulling on the spring? Right, the force of gravity acting on the 0 0.510 kilogram mass that is hanging from it, okay? So essentially then what we have, and like I said, this is an extremely common Hooke's Law question, okay, is that we're gonna have negative K times X, right, uh, equals M times G, right? Going all right with that? Now, the K times X, that restoring force, is opposite 
in direction to gravity. Would you agree? So if I'm setting those two forces equal, but I know that one of them is opposite the other, do I need that negative in there? No, if I put that negative in there, it's gonna mess things up and I'm gonna get a negative K, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm gonna recognize that this is already opposite and just say, I recognize that, I'm solving for K, so I'm going to ignore this negative force by saying I already recognize their opposite directions, okay? Um, so, when I'm manipulating for k, I'm simply going to divide both sides by x. Now, x is down. So is g. Okay, so now this is going to work out, right? Because they're both in the same direction. Okay, um, so I divided both sides by x, okay? And then I'm simply going to go 0 0.510 times 9.81 to get my force of gravity. And then I'm going to divide that by 0 0.5, and which is going to leave us with 9 point something, right? I forgot to start my calculator. Okay, ten exactly. All right, so ten newtons per meter, and we have three significant four significant. 10.10 newtons per meter. Hey, everybody all right with that? Okay, like I said, this is a very, very common Hooke's Law question because it can be worded a bit more vaguely. Right? This is also how if you've ever gone to the grocery store and you see like in the produce section, they have all those scales. Okay? Those scales all work on Hooke's Law. Right? So you put, the, you put the fruit or whatever in the scale and the gravity pulls it down and stretches the scale. Okay? And all they do is they have the displacements on there, but instead of actually having meters on there, they just have the equivalent in grams or kilograms, as the case may be, okay? on, the, on the thing. And it can tell you then the weight of the fruit, okay? actually the mass of the fruit. We all know that it's not actually the weight because it wouldn't be in newtons. But that's okay. Todd, you have a question? Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, let's have a look at number one together here because it's asking about acceleration. Okay, acceleration is also something that's gonna involve Hooke's Law. Okay, if an object is oscillating back and forth, okay, there's a restoring force that's causing that acceleration, agreed? Okay, if it's in a frictionless situation, so let's say it's a mass on the spring, it's oscillating back and forth horizontally on a frictionless surface, the restoring force is then also the what force? The net force. It's the only force causing the object to accelerate. Okay? So in that situation then, I can say that negative k times x equals m times a. All right? And that can allow me to calculate the instantaneous acceleration, or that is the acceleration at any given point, in the oscillation. Right? Because I know that at any point in the oscillation, that is the net force. Okay, is everyone okay with that idea? Being that restoring force is the only force acting, at least for a frictionless horizontal oscillator. All right, so if I have a 0.724 kilogram mass oscillating on a horizontal frictionless surface, exactly the situation I just described, okay, attached to a spring with this spring constant, what is the mass's displacement when its acceleration is 4.11 meters per second squared to the left. Okay, so we're looking for acceleration here. Okay, and I'm going to say that um, left is negative. Okay, and then right is positive. Okay, so we're looking for the displacement. If the acceleration is to the left, which way is the displacement? To the right. To the right. If I displace something to the right, the restoring force is trying to pull it that the way. other way. Okay, so those two are always going to be opposite. That means the force and the acceleration are going to have the same direction. It's going to be opposite the displacement. All right, so I know, um, I know all these things except for x. Right? So I'm going, to, I'm going to isolate x 
Okay, and I'm going to have then that x equals m times a over negative k. All right, and my acceleration is left. Okay, so uh, when I do this, then I'm going to have the point seven two four times negative 4.11 because I established left is negative up here. Okay, and then I'm going to divide that by negative 8.21. What's going to happen to my negatives? Right, and I'm going to get a displacement that is right, which is also positive. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so when we do that, when we plug that all in, okay, so mass times acceleration okay, divided by negative k. Right. Should give me a displacement of 0.362 meters because I have three significant digits. So 0.362 meters. Right. Okay. Is direction important there? It absolutely is. Okay. Let's have you guys try. Um, Actually, let's do number two together. Um, so I've got a 50 gram mass attached to a spring with a constant of four newtons per meter. And the mass oscillates with an amplitude of 1.12 meters. What is its maximum speed? What kind of question is this? It's a conservation of energy question. Okay, how do we know that? Because it sounds like it kind of gives similar information to Hooke's law. Because it's oscillating. Okay, well, so was the first one. Usually, then, I did say that yesterday, so good on you for hearing that yesterday. Okay, I did say that most of the time, Hooke's law questions are dealing with an object that's not oscillating, or it's only talking about one point in the oscillation. How many points are being discussed in this question? All of them. Well, all of them were, like, at least specifically, two. The point of maximum amplitude, and where does maximum speed occur? Equilibrium. At equilibrium. So it's talking about comparing two points. Okay. Now, according to the law of conservation of energy, the energy at those two points is the same. The same. Okay. So I can set this up as a law of conservation of energy question. EI equals EF. Okay, my givens are the mass, that's important, I'm gonna need that. Spring constant, also important, I'm gonna need that. Amplitude, where do I put that? X. Yeah, that's X, but it's the maximum value of X. Okay, um, and then I know that I've also, I'm looking for the maximum speed. So let's make our initial point the maximum amplitude. And we'll make this the equilibrium position. Okay, are any of those zero? EPF. Yep, EPF is zero because at equilibrium my displacement is zero. So I can't have any potential energy. I'm not stretching or compressing the spring. Okay, any others? EKI. Yeah, EKI. Because at the maximum amplitude, what's my speed? It's zero, that's where it stops before it coming back. Okay? So my initial kinetic is also zero. So that simplifies things a great deal. Okay? Formula for, in, for um, elastic potential energy, one half kx squared. But they specifically said this was the amplitude. So what I often do, just to make it clear to me, especially if I've got all forms of energy, okay, I put in that it's the amplitude. Okay? Um, and then one half mvf squared. All right, so I'm trying to solve for Vf. What can I cancel right now? Um, the halves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they would cancel when I start manipulating, but I can get rid of them now, okay? And then I don't have to worry about moving them around, okay? I'm trying to get Vf by itself, so what do I do with M? Divide it. Divide over the other side, okay? This is Vf squared. I want just Vf, so I square root. Right, and then I'm gonna be looking at this. Vf equals, um, four newtons per meter 
times the amplitude, 1.12 meters, divided by the mass, 0 0.05 kilograms. Should your 1.12 still be squared though? That? Oh, yes, it absolutely should be. Good catch. What do you suppose the most common mistake is? Don't square it. Don't square that. Yeah, no, the thing I just did. I was doing it, I did it on purpose to see if you could catch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got the square root of 4 times 1.12 squared okay, divided by 0 0.05. All right. So we've got a uh, maximum speed of 10.0 meters per second. one like that on the unit exam last year. That actually that easy. Okay. I had maximum amplitude and equilibrium as the uh, two positions. Okay. All right, uh, we're not going to do number two. It's vertical, so we'll skip that one. Okay, that's a good one. It's a really good one. This is two questions in one. You have to do one thing in order to get the information you need to get the other thing. Okay, so it's a mass on a spring. Okay, it's a system, and it wants the period. Okay, so we know that the period of a mass on a spring is calculated with this formula here, um, m over k. Right. The information that we're given is the amplitude. And the maximum speed and the spring constant. Okay, so what do I need if I'm going to get the period? Mass. Okay. Can I get the mass with the other, with the three things they gave me? Yeah. Okay. Are they comparing two different positions in the oscillation? They talk about the maximum amplitude and the maximum speed. Is that two different points in the oscillation? Is that just like the question we just did? It is, except in the last question we had to calculate the speed. Now they want to calculate the mass. All right, I'm going to give you a few minutes. You've got to get the mass, then you can do the period calculation. Okay, so you got two steps, conservation of energy, and then you can use what you get from there to do the period calculation. So we know it's a law of conservation of energy question, at least is, is the first step, because they're talking about the point of maximum amplitude and the equilibrium position. So we're comparing two points, and the only thing that's the same at those two points is the mechanical energy of the uh, oscillator. Okay, so we're going to say that EI equals EF. Okay, we know that the initial point is at the maximum amplitude where all of the energy is potential. Okay, and we know that the final point is at equilibrium where the speed is at its maximum. Okay, um, we're trying to find the mass, so if we can right away cancel the halves, bring V max squared over to this side by dividing it. Okay, that'll leave us with M, so we're going to have. Uh, 12, or sorry, uh, 5.13 times um, 0.1225 squared divided by 5.1, oh, oops, five, this will be 5.03 divided by 5.13 squared. Okay, so if we do that, we'll get the mass of the object, so 5.03 times 0.1225 squared and divided by 5.13 squared. Oop, I did mess up. Oh, two divided signs in there. Maybe both. Seems excessive to do it twice. All right. Is this thing very big? It's like three grams. Okay, so it's not a very heavy mass. All right. Um, so we are looking to now calculate the um, period of that oscillator, so I'm just going to plug that in for m, so I'm going to have 2 times pi okay, times the square root of that number, okay, divided
divided by k, which was 5.03. Okay, so I get that the uh, period of that is 0.15 seconds, so it's going to go really, really fast. Okay. It oscillates out and back into equilibrium again okay, in 0.15 seconds. Okay, so that's very, very fast. Okay. In fact, if we went 1 divided by that, that means it does it 6.66 times per second. Okay, so 6 hertz. Goes back and forth pretty quickly. Okay. All right. Would it be pretty common to see a two-part question like that? Definitely. Like that's something I would do on like a final exam, so I can test two things in one question. Okay, and be more efficient about the test. So, okay. And neither one of those things was very difficult on their own. It's just recognizing that I have to do one thing before I can do the other thing. Okay, I would like you guys to try questions one and two. Yeah, just one and two for now. Okay, answers are up there if you want to check your answers as you go. Okay, give you a few minutes to work on those. Okay, so we have a 2.6 kilogram mass. So we have to first convert that to kilograms. Okay. Uh, and it's got an acceleration of 20 meters per second squared okay, at a displacement of 0 0.700 meters on a spring. What's the K for this spring? Okay, how many different positions are they asking us about here? Just one. Yeah, okay. So what kind of question is it? It's a Hooke's Law question, yeah. They're not asking about comparing amplitude and, and equilibrium or two different positions in the oscillation. They're telling us there's this one spot where this happens, okay? That's a Hooke's Law question. All right, so um, negative k times x equals m times a. If I'm looking at what I've got here, okay, I've got three out of the four things I just wrote on the board, all right? All I have to do is find k, all right? So I'm gonna divide both sides by negative x. Actually, I'm gonna take the negative right out because they didn't give me a vector on the acceleration and I'm just looking for the spring constant anyway, all right? So k is gonna equal m times a over x, okay? So that'll be our point zero zero two six, okay? Uh, times 20 divided by 0.7, right? And when we do that, we should get 0.0743 newtons per meter to three significant digits. Okay. Could you quickly go over one, actually? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions on two? Um, all right, so for question number one, okay, we know the mass, okay, 2.6 kilograms, and we know the amplitude, 0.8 meters. We know the spring constant, 40, okay, and we're looking for the acceleration of the mass Okay, when it's at a displacement of 0.3 meters. Okay, so A is what kind of question? It's a Hooke's Law question, the first one. Okay, it gives us, the whole question gives us information about many positions, but part A only wants the acceleration when it's at this position. And I have enough information with K and M, okay, um, to get and this x to get um, to get that a so k times x equals m times a right and um, we're just going to isolate for the acceleration here they didn't tell me which direction this is so um, I'm just going to have to say that the acceleration is in the opposite direction and it, that it's negative right um, so solving for acceleration we're going to divide both sides by mass and so that's going to be um, 40 times 0.3 divided by the mass, which was 2.6. So that should give us negative 4.80 meters per second squared. Okay, we have to assume okay, that that acceleration would be opposite the 0.3 meter displacement we were given. All right. Now, for maximum speed, does that occur in a different position than the maximum amplitude? does. Maximum speed occurs at equilibrium. 
equilibrium, maximum amplitude is the opposite of that. So that is going to be a conservation of energy question. Okay, EI equals EF, right? EP initial plus EK initial equals EP final plus EK final, right? Uh, I'm going to make this the uh, equilibrium and this the maximum amplitude. So that means I have no initial kinetic and I have no final potential. Right, and I'm going to be left with this, 1 half Ka squared equals 1 half MVF squared. And I am solving for the maximum speed, so the halves will cancel. Okay, divide both sides by M and square root. Okay, so VF will be the square root of um, 40 times 0.8 squared divided by 2.6, okay, and All right, so we should get a um, maximum speed of 3.14 meters per second, okay, on that one. Right, and then to get the period, well, now I have, um, I've got mass and I've got K, so I'll have to just do 2 pi, and the square root of M over K, and just plug in my numbers on that. All right, we okay with number one? All right, how are we doing with these? Types? What did you say you made EI? I made EI the uh, maximum amplitude, okay. and I made EF the equilibrium position. Okay. All right, uh, there are a few. I'm going to give you guys about a, let's say, a five minute break here, and then I'm going to put a few up on the board that I want you to work on. Okay, so you can take a five minute break here, and then we'll work on.